Next up we have Reverend Mike Roberts. He's the director of Workers United Local 471, the union representing our campus food service workers. Um, he has also been working hard to fight for the right of workers at the Holiday Inn Express in Latham and their right to form a union. Thank you very much. to stand with these folks today in these difficult times. What we face today is nothing less than an assault on the American education system. Yesterday, is there anything I can do to stop this from feeding back? Does anybody know? Oh, wait. Yesterday, I was in a coffee shop Thanks. where I overheard a table full of teachers talking about what their life is like, <clears throat> talking about how the administration had no idea the kind of hours that they were putting in, nor did they have any idea what kind of hours it takes to educate people, and did not value the work that they were doing. went out to them. I, I, I approached them after they were done with their meeting and I, I explained that my father was a teacher. He had been a teacher his entire professional life and that he got up at 4 a.m. most mornings to get to his school in time to get the preparations done and that he was also a faithful Nyssen member of all of those decades and what a fan I am of their, of their union. It pains me to see the kind of devotion that teachers put in, in particular, that, are not, that is not valued by our society. Public education, in particular, has some very important purposes, and they are no less than the cultivation of democracy, the maintenance, the maintenance of a free citizenry, and the evolution of society. If we turn education over to corporate interests, we will get the same effect that we have had when science has been turned over to corporate interests. I was born in 1961 and it wasn't until I was well into my 20s that science in part was not underwriting the notion that tobacco did not cause cancer. Because those corporate interests were able to produce science that disrupted the link between the smoking of tobacco and cancer for decades that I personally can attest to because I lived through that. If we allow companies or private interests to take over education, we will live through the same effects. We will have human beings designed to fit companies rather than having companies designed to serve human ends. It's that simple. One of my greatest heroes is John Dewey, who about a century ago was proposing that the purpose of education was to humanize. It was, or it is, to help people reach their highest potentials and that the state had an obligation to facilitate that. What amazes me and saddens me deeply is that a hundred years later, we can be so far behind that eight ball. It is, it is shocking. I, I believe that for Dewey and others in that era, there was the presumption that there was a certain moral art to the universe. If the 20th century has shown us nothing else, it has shown us that there probably is not a moral art to the universe, and that if we are going to maintain the course of being truly human, creating societies that can thrive on this planet without destroying it, and rising above our own forms of tribalism, it is through education, which we cannot count on the corporations to achieve for us. That is not in their interest, and that is not what they will create. So I think the, 
I think the bad news is that the struggle does not end, but the good news is that we are not the first. There are many before us have fought this fight, and many have won. It's just, it's our turn. It's our generation. It's my generation, and it's your generation who needs to step up now and to keep this going. And I think at this point in the, in the life of our planet, most of us could agree that it is quite clearly a life or death struggle that we are faced with now. We cannot afford to lose, so we must not lose. Thank you very much.